Hey everyone, this is Jack from Galaxy Grudge, and today we're going to be creating this awesome Niagara Fire system in Unreal Engine. We are going to create some procedural textures using Substance, and then we're going to use those textures in Unreal to set up the materials dynamically. For anybody who is unfamiliar with us, this channel is the home of our multiplayer first-person shooter, Galaxy Grudge. We use this channel to share the progress of the game, and we also make tutorials like this one for the things that we're learning along the way. If you're interested in becoming a part of our project, you can join our Discord, which is linked in the description of the video. Otherwise, if you're just here to learn about Substance, Niagara, Effects Materials, or if you're just a pyromaniac, then please just enjoy the video. Okay, so here we are over in uh, Substance Designer. And this is going to be the first step along the way to creating the textures that we need to take over into Unreal to build our fire system. So I'm just going to go to create a new substance graph. I'm just going to call this fire. I'm going to make it 2K and I'm going to hit OK and that'll set up our inputs and outputs. I'm just going to get rid of all these because I don't need them. Um, and we're going to start creating our image channels. So the way that we're going to do this is um, we're going to create a series of textures for the red, green, and blue channels of a single texture. Um, and that's all we're going to use for this entire system. So the red channel is going to be um, a basic fire pattern. Um, and let's just start creating that procedurally. So I'm just going to find myself a pearl in noise, drop down one of those. Um, and then we, we can see that down here in the 2D editor. And I might just change the scale of this a little bit, something like that. And I'm also going to create um, a, like a, this is basically going to be like a sub UV uh, texture image. So we're going to have like four different sprites that make up this total texture. So I need a, uh, I need a, an area to define the opacity for each one of our sprites. So I'm just going to go to a uh, tile sampler going to drop that down and if we view that we can see all the tiles so I just want uh, two tiles in each axis so something like that and rather than a square um, I probably want like a paraboloid all right so um, if I just drag off this sampler and I make myself a blend node and drop the pearl in noise in here and then for the blend mode if I go multiply then you can see what that's doing. So that basically gives us a fire pattern um, in each of those paraboloids, which is cool. Um, but it's a little bit uniform. So I think what we probably want to do is add like a little bit of noise um, to each of these just to break it up a little bit. So if I come back to this Perlin noise, um, one thing that I can, that, that does help um, in creating a little bit of non-uniformity in here is by blending multiples of these together. So I'm just going to copy that and paste another one. And then I'll select that one and I'll just randomize it with the random seed. And then I might just scale it a little bit differently as well. And then I'll drop down another blend node, connect those up. And if we go to this blend mode, I'll just play with some of the, I might do something like, have a look at these blend modes, see if we can find something that's a little bit more interesting. Yeah, so the add sub is kind of nice with a little bit of opacity. Add linear dodge, that's a little bit interesting. I'll just go with the add sub, something like that. And then I'll plug that back in here. Give this our, our mat, which is pretty cool. Um, and then I'll just play with the size of this just to get something a little bit more interesting. And then what I might also do with this um, fire map um, before we blend it over our tiles is I might just apply like a little bit of noise to this just to kind of give it some waviness like you would expect with fire. So off this blend, I'm just gonna make myself a uh, vector warp grayscale. And this takes an input, a black and white input, and then you give it a vector map, which is basically like a two channel input. So in order to make that two channel input, what I might do is just make myself a clouds two. So 
something like this. Scale it up a bit. Uh, I'll make an, I'll copy and paste that over here. Grab the second one, add some randomness to it. And then I'm going to plug both of these into an RGBA merge, just so I can merge the data into a single stream that we can plug into the input map. Cool. Now, when I plug that in here, this will be a total mess. Um, that's what we expect. But I'm just going to drag the intensity of that map down, something like that. And then what I'm going to do, just so that we don't have all this grainy noise in our fire map, is I'm going to come to this RGBA and I'm just going to reduce some of this... Uh, some of the density in this map by blurring it off a little bit. So I'll just use a blur HQ, drag up the quality, drag the intensity down just enough to reduce that. Go back here, something like that. That's kind of cool. Let's play with that blur a little bit. Yeah, something like that. And then if we come back here to our Vector warp and plug that in here. Yeah, then we have like a bit of a fire pattern, which is kind of cool. One thing I would actually like to do is um, warp this um, paraboloid shape a little bit as well. Um, so what I might do here is I'll just drag off here and I'll just warp this with a, uh, I might just use a multi-directional warp grayscale. And then I'll just drag like a basic Perlin noise into the warp intensity input. Um, might make this a little bit larger and yeah, something like that. That's kind of cool. Might even go a little bit higher on the intensity, something like that. Plug that in here. Cool. Yeah, it's not too bad. Um, and then I might just come back to my Perlin noises and just play around a little bit with them until I can get some patterns that I'm happy with. Yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of cool. So that'll probably work for our fire sprites. Now, right now, like when you're looking at these, they, they don't look that impressive. They're not that interesting. Um, but once we plug them all in and we do the right things over in Unreal, um, you will actually see this start to come together. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to grab all of these guys and um, I'm going to make a frame node and I'm just going to call this fire sprite. And then I'm going to, like we said, we're going to plug that into the red channel of our final image. So I'm just going to come over here and make an RGBA merge, grab that. And there's our red channel. So the red channel of our image is going to be our fire. And then like we said, the uh, green is going to be our smoke. I'll drag that down here and then let's get going on our smoke. So for the smoke sprite, um, what I might do is grab myself a uh, clouds node. Um, that's just sort of like a useful first thing. And I'm actually just going to steal this uh, thing that we made up here. You could just drag down off this, um, but I'm just going to copy the nodes and paste them just to make it a little bit more easy to read what's going on. Alrighty, and to randomize these a little bit, um, what I'll do is I'll just drag the intensity down on that a little bit and I'll randomize this Perlin noise so that we get a different, um, a different pattern. And then I'm going to pull off this and blend this in here, grab this one and go multiply. And so this is going to be sort of like our smoke sprite. Um, so just looking at this, I kind of want the smoke to be a little bit more transparent. I don't want it to be super blocky um, and blown out like this. We kind of want some empty areas in our smoke. So what I might do is grab this, copy and paste it. And I'll grab this second version and just randomize this so that we get a different pattern. And then I'm just going to multiply these together. So the blacks will multiply the whites away and it'll break up some of the image like that, but that's okay. Pull that in there and let's check this out. Yeah, that's getting there. What I might do is uh, I might scale these up just so that we have a little bit more emptiness, a little bit more detail. And then this is a little bit too, um, 
little bit too detailed. We kind of want this to be sort of like a little bit more blurry, a little bit more smoky. So after this guy, I'm just gonna drop in a blur HQ grayscale. Take that up there. And we just wanna be fairly gentle with this. We don't wanna to go too overboard. Sure, probably something like that. Nice. Um, and I would also like to add some waviness to this too, just so that it feels a little bit more smoky, a little bit more broken up. So um, let's multiply like a Perlin noise in here to break it up a little bit. And let's do some warping and distortion with that as well. So I'll grab myself a Perlin noise, scale it down something like this. It's probably okay. Multiply that in. Something like that. And the, actually because the Perlin noise is the foreground, I can reduce the opacity. Um, and what I can probably do is um, just color correct this a little bit to add a little bit more contrast to it. So if I add a levels node, um, I can do something like this, which will clamp those colors a little bit more. Sure. So we were there. Now we're there. And like I said, we'll just add like a little bit of noise to this too. So um, again, I'll just make myself a uh, like a vector warp grayscale, plug this in, and then I'll just grab my, this Perlin noise, uh, copy and paste that a couple of times, make myself another one of those RGBA merge nodes to create the uh, two channel vector input for this guy. And I just have to randomize one of these Perlin noises to change the noise pattern so that we don't have the same pattern in the red and green. Might grab this one and just scale that a little bit so those patterns are sort of offset they're not exactly the same randomize this one too cool plug that in there and again you'll see like it's very extreme dial that down just very sort of subtle just to give a few areas of pinching um, just to make it feel like the smoke is kind of a little bit wavy Awesome. So that's kind of starting to feel pretty good. Um, one thing I should have also mentioned, and we probably should have done it up here too, is that um, when we're creating these channels, we want to be using the full zero to one color space of the image. Um, sometimes in substance, when you're making textures, what you'll find is like you, you're getting rid of the top end and the bottom end of the color through various operations. So in order to sort of refit those colors back into the full zero to one range, um, it's good to add an auto levels, uh, which just adds the full dynamic range of the zero to one color space. Um, you know, um, it's all about uh, how much data you're using, how much data you have access to. Um, so you might as well use the full gamut to make the most of uh, the memory that you're taking up on your GPU when you load these textures in. So you can see I'm doing the same thing with the smoke here. This was before the auto levels. This is after. Cool. So if we call this done for our, um, for our smoke, um, we can just drag this into the green channel of this RGBA and that's what we have. But I think actually, um, what I might want to do is change the way that this noise pattern is breaking up this opacity channel for the smoke. So rather than using this multi-directional warp, um, I might grab myself, um, another one of these vector warp grayscales and I'll copy and paste this Perlin noise here, randomize it, um, and feed it into another one of those RGBA merge nodes. And take that in there. Because I think we, we sort of want to break up this alpha a little bit differently to the fire one. I think it'll help our smoke a little bit more. So I'm just going to scale these Perlin noises a little bit differently like that cool and then I'll drop this one in here get rid of that yeah I think that's gonna be better just having a little bit more sort of waviness and puffiness on the edges of these is gonna be is gonna be helpful um, 
So what I might do is just come in here and just change, change the scale of some of these. We just add some disorder until I've got like a pattern that I kind of like. And it's actually like we're getting this kind of harsh fall off between the edges here. So I wonder if maybe what I could do is uh, come in here and use a slightly different, um, this Braboloid is fairly sort of big and flat. Um, there's a different shape in here called a thorn, which is a little bit more of a smooth gradient from um, white to black. So if we did something like that, and if I came back into the tile sampler and then scale this shape up, we might get a slightly better resulting texture. Yeah, look at that. That's a lot better. So when we auto levels that up, that's going to be that's going to be so much nicer to use in Unreal. That's going to look a lot better. And I wonder if I I expect that this should be using the full 0 to 1 space, but um I might just color correct this a tiny bit just to give us a little bit more vibrance in the whites. Just a little bit. We don't want any white at the very edge of the image because we need the we need it to cut off at the very side. Yeah, beautiful. Okay, that's cool. Sweet. Um, so that's our green channel for our smoke. We've got our red channel for our fire. So I'm just gonna come down here and frame all of this. This will be our smoke. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're just going to create one more channel for the blue. And that's just going to be the sort of like an overall distortion map. And we're going to use that in Unreal to basically animate distortion through the UVs of our sprites. So, so that we can make the fire sort of, you know, flicker and we can make the smoke sort of um, dissipate and break apart and give some motion. And this one's going to be pretty simple. Um, so what I'm just going to do is create myself another pearl in noise. Scale that a little bit. I think something like that's probably okay. And then what I might do is just grab myself another one of these clouds nodes. Scale that a bit. And like before, we're just going to do a vector warp grayscale. So we're going to take this pattern, we're going to warp it using um, a noise pattern made by these clouds. Just add some randomness to that. RGBA merge. Cool. Drag that in here and that will be fairly noisy. So we'll do something like this and then we will blur this incoming vector channel. Nice. So that's pretty good. Might add a little bit more intensity and then blur this a little bit more just to rejoice, reduce some of that uh, low frequency noise. And I might even take this Perlin noise and just scale it a little bit so that we have some more detail to distort our UVs. Cool, so this is gonna be sort of like our distortion map. And we can always come back and change this when we get into Unreal and see how this all looks visually, but I think this is probably gonna work pretty well. Nice. Okay. So what I'll do is just frame this. I'm going to call this our distortion mat. Drop that in here as our blue. And there we go. Um, so, you know, looking at this looks nothing like fire. Um, but once we take it over to, into Unreal and we set up our materials and we get this into a dynamic system, it's going to look pretty cool. So to write this out um, in the 2D view, I'm just gonna go save and I'm just gonna make a folder here. Call this tutorial texture. And then in here, I'm just gonna call this fire map packed. Um, PNG is fine, save that out. And now we're gonna jump over into Unreal and we're gonna start a new project and get going on the other side of this. Alrighty, so I've got my Unreal uh, project browser open. 
Uh, it doesn't really matter what we create here. Um, you can pretty much do what we're going to be doing in any of these modes. I'm just going to go to film video and live events. I'm going to go to a blank project. I'm going to start from scratch. I'm just going to call this fire tutorial and hit create. That'll set up the project uh, and it's going to do some shader compilation. So we'll just pause and then restart when that's ready to go. Alrighty, so here we are over in Unreal. Um, we've got our basic project set up and this is just going to be uh, the sandbox where we're going to do this development. So in the default level that we have, um, I'm just going to clean a few things up here, things that we don't need. So we don't need the player start. Um, we probably can get rid of some of this stuff as well. Uh, sky sphere. Probably turn on the fog. Uh, yeah, sure. So I might just get rid of the sky sphere. Um, sphere reflection capture. Probably don't need that either. Might get rid of that guy. And yeah, sure. Everything else is probably fine. Um, okay. Um, so what I might do is I'll just create a basic shape in this world and then this is going to be the shape that um, we will set fire to. So uh, I'm just going to make a basic sphere. I'll chuck this in the middle and I'm just going to make a very simple material for this sphere. Create this material here and we'll just do sort of like a fairly dark um, gray, something like 0.1, I'll just apply, save that, uh, and then just drop that onto our sphere, move that up, something like that. Um, and just so that we can really see this fire, uh, what I might do is um, come to the light source and just drop this down to something like one, just so that we have like a really nice... Um, dark environment so that you guys can see this effect a little bit better. Um, and because we're creating a material that's going to be sort of uh, fairly glowy and hot, we're going to need a post-process volume in here with bloom switched on just so that you can see the glowing. So to give you an example, if I come back here to my sphere material, um, if we plug like a fairly hot color, you know, like something like 10, if we plug that into our emissive, that'll make that completely white. Um, and that's cool. We're getting sort of like Lumen is doing the ground um, globe illumination, but we're not getting any glow around this sphere and that's what we want. So I'm just going to grab a uh, post-process volume, drag that in here. I'll just set the location to zero, 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 move that off to the side so that we don't have to look at it. And then I'm just going to set the uh, infinite extent to true. And that'll just basically mean that whatever settings we have on this post process volume, uh, we will see those through the camera. So um, if we come back to our settings, I'm just going to search bloom. I'm going to switch this on. And then I'm just going to get rid of this lens flare because we don't really want that. So I'll just search flare, override the intensity. Set it to zero. Cool. Yeah. And now we have what we're expecting. We're getting that nice kind of um, glow for things that are hot. Cool. So I'll just come back to my material, uh, disable that color, send this back to a flat gray and we're ready to go. Okay. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to create myself a folder. Just call this texture and um, that packed map that we made just going to drag that over here, bring that in. And if we open that and disable the alpha channel, we can see our textures. So we can see the red, that's our fire, like we talked about. The green is going to be our smoke and the blue is going to be our sort of overall distortion mat that we're going to use for our UVs. Alrighty. Um, so let's go and set up the first thing, which is going to be a very, very basic Niagara system with some particles for our fire. So come back here to my content and I'm going to right click and I'm going to go effects and I'm going to make a Niagara system. And I'm going to create an empty system because I just want to show you guys all the steps and I don't want to use any sort of predefined um, assets. So I'm going to call this fire system. I'm going to open that up. 
And inside the system, I'm just going to create my first emitter. And I'll use a, um, I'll use a fountain, but we're going to change this and delete a whole bunch of stuff that we don't need. So I'm just going to select this guy, hit F2 to rename it. I'm going to call this fire. And um, I'll come back into the viewport and I'm just going to drag this system in here and just sit it right in the center of this sphere like that. Cool. So now we can sort of see it in real time, like what we're looking at. So I'll come back to the system um, and there's a few things I want to change. So I want to get rid of the gravity, I want to get rid of the drag. And really, I just want some sprites that are going to float up in the air above the sphere. So under the initialized particle, that's where we have access to the size of the sprites and the lifetime. And then under the spawn rate, we have like how many particles are spawning per second. So for our fire, I think we can probably get away with something like maybe eight. Yep. And then um, we want them to be bigger and we want them to be a little bit slower. So under the size uh, for the minimum scale, I might do 50. And then for the maximum, maybe 80. Nice. Maybe a little bit bigger. Maybe like 65 and 90. Cool. And then let's slow them down a bit. So under this add velocity, we'll just slow this down. We'll go 300 to 350, something like that. Nice. And then we need them to die a little bit quicker. They're sort of lasting too long here. So come back here. Um, so under my initialized particle, we get the lifetime here. So I'll just go 0.4 to 0.6. Cool. So that's probably going to work. All right, nice. Um, and I can probably just delete this um, scale color here because we're going to set up our own parameters to drive this fire. And that's probably all we need. So I'm just going to go compile, save everything. And let's go set up our material for our flame. So I'm going to make another folder here called this materials. And in here, I'm just going to right click and create one. And we'll just call this MM for master material underscore. And we'll call this fire mat. And we're going to open that guy. And we're going to come back to our textures. And drag this in. Cool. So yeah, let's start uh, defining how this is going to look. So we have access to all of these um, color channels here, um, but there's a few things that we want to set up on our material before we get started. Um, and the first thing that we want to do is select our material here and change the shading model. Um, default lit is, is for materials that are going to react to light. And we don't want our fire to react to light. We always just want our fire to be exactly the color that we want it to be. So I'm going to switch this from default lit to unlit. And then you'll see a whole bunch of those material inputs disappear. Um, and then we don't want it to be opaque. We want it to be translucent because we want to be able to um, drive the opacity of our sprites with this image here. Alrighty. Um, so what I'm going to do here is just drag the red channel into our um, opacity. And then I'm going to change the geometry in our material preview here to a square so that we can see it. Cool. And what I'm going to do then is just make a simple color for my emissive. So I'm going to hold three and left click, which will make me a three component vector, otherwise known as a color. Drag that into the emissive and I'm going to make this like a ready orange color, something like that. Hit OK. And, you know, by default, if I just apply this and go back to the viewport, I'll just make like a, uh, a cube so that we can actually see our material in action. And we can kind of preview it a little bit. Cool. Yeah, so you can kind of see by default that that's sort of not really looking very fiery. It's not really bright enough. So let's come back to our fire material and uh, let's crank the value coming out of this color. Let's multiply that by 10. Drop that into our emissive, which will make it 10 times as bright. And 
now you're sort of getting like a little bit of glow with our post-process volume. Probably want it to be a little bit brighter though. Let's try something super bright. Let's crank it to something like 50. Yeah, there we go. So now we're getting sort of like a little bit of a glow. But what we're also getting is just like a completely blown out mess here. So we probably want to do something to our opacity channel just to make that a little bit better. So if we come back here, um, the red channel, what we're doing, that's what we're using for our opacity. Um, we can actually subtract some of this away so that we get some uh, actual fire shape coming through here. So let's just drag off this and go subtract. And let's start by subtracting something like 0.1 and drag that into the opacity. Okay, let's try 0.2. 0.25, yeah, cool. All right, come back here. Nice, okay, so that's a good starting point. Um, we'll change this as we go through and what we're gonna do is we're gonna animate this value over time as the fire emits and goes up into the air. We'll subtract more and more from that opacity channel just so that the fire gets eaten away. Okay, so for the time being, um, let's come back to our fire system and swap this material into this sprite material here so that we can actually see it in action. So in the fire system, um, under the emitter, I'm going to come to the sprite renderer and I'm going to click here and just change this to the, to the fire mat, and compile. And now you can see that that's coming out of the sphere, but at the same time, we're getting all four of these images per particle, which we don't want. So there's a handy little way that we can change that in the uh, fire system. If we come back here to the sprite renderer, um, down here under sub UV, sub image size because we have two images horizontally and vertically we just set that to two and then that'll just use one quarter of the image for every particle um, it might be a little bit difficult to tell here but if you can read in this viewport we're getting the same image for every single one so we just need to randomly spawn one of those different images per particle so under the particle spawn uh, i'm going to hit the plus and i'm going to go sub uv animation and then uh, we get a little warning here because we need to select the sprite renderer, which we can do. And then under sub UV animation linear, I'm just gonna go random. And now we're getting a random image for each particle, which is cool. Um, so under the initialized particle, um, we should also be getting a uh, sprite rotation mode here. So that's random. So each particle will be randomly rotated, which is nice. And just looking at this sphere, we can probably make these a little bit uh, bigger. So I'm going to come back to my system under the uh, initialize. I might make this something like 90 to 125, something like that. That's a little bit bigger, which is nice. Alrighty, cool. Um, so the next thing, now that we've got this... Um, previewed in real time here with our particle system. The next thing I kind of want to do is add um, some fade off towards the end. So you can kind of see that these particles are just kind of like reaching the top and then just like disappearing. So we'd, it'd be better if we could actually make them sort of like smoothly fade off as they disappear up the top. We also want to add some noise and distortion to the fire so that it looks like it's waving around and it's actually got some motion to it. So that's also something we're going to do. Um, and then we also want to sort of like erode that opacity over time so that um, the particles get chopped away um, towards the end of their life. And we can set up all of the parameters that we need in our material and then feed into those parameters from the Niagara system. All right, so let's start working on the distortion on the uh, texture here. So we talked about using the blue channel from this image to distort our UVs. Let's set that up now. Let's just grab this texture and copy and paste it over here. And let's start accessing our UVs and then splitting up those channels so that we can add noise into them. So I'm going to make a texture coordinate node. And then what I'm going to do is split the U and the V up. So I'll come out here and I'm going to go component component mask. And this basically just allows you to extract individual channels from any vector from two to three to four. So um, it says red here that I'm extracting, but it does the same thing with your texture coordinate, which is that basically a two component vector U and V. So this will grab the U 
And if I make another one of these guys and set this to the second input, that'll be the V. And then what we're basically going to do is we're just going to add noise to one of these channels. Because these particles are going to be randomly rotated in any direction, that means we're always going to get noise in every direction of our system, which is cool. So once we've split that up, um, the way these channels basically work is, um, you know, U and V goes from zero to one, and then we want to add random noise to those values over time. So to the V, what I can do is I can make an add. And what I can do is plug that in here to this blue noise channel. And then after this, um, we can merge these back into a single UV channel by using the append vector node. The U goes in here, the V goes in here, and then we plug this into our UVs. So straight away, you can see that this is like really, really messy and all over the place. And that's just because we're adding massive values. We're basically adding values that go from zero to one. So we don't want that much data. We probably only want values that go from zero to 0.1. So what I can do is just multiply this by 0.1 and then plug that in here. And then our distortion will be minimized. Um, but the other thing we want to do is um, we want to make sure that our distortion doesn't just go positively, it also goes negatively. So right now, you know, we have values coming from zero to one here, then we multiply by 0.1. So now the values will be coming from zero to 0.1. So if we just subtract 0 0.05 from this, then our values will be going from negative 0 0.05 to positive 0 0.05, which will distort the image in two directions, not just one. So if we come here and we subtract, We'll go 0 0.05, and basically you just want this number to be half of whatever this number is. Plug that in. Now you're getting distortion positively and negatively. And the magic here is basically plugging an animated panner into these UVs so that this noise map animates across um, our fire texture. So if we make a panner and plug that in and set the speed to something like 0.1, yeah, now we're getting this like nice wavy fire pattern. So let's just make that a little bit more intense. Yeah, sure. Something like that's kind of cool. Hit apply on that guy. And I might also just make the particle speed a little bit slower. So under my velocity, I'll go from 230 to... Yeah, 250. So that might that might work a little bit nicer. Awesome. Okay, so that's going to add like a little bit of noise to our fire. Um, we also need to erode that noise and chop it away um, so that the fire sort of slowly disintegrates as it goes up into the air. And I actually, there's a, I think this these fire sprites are a little bit moving a little bit too randomly. So I'm just going to come back in here to this add velocity in cone. And I'm going to change the cone angle from 32 to something like um, 16. Now our fire will just kind of head up in a bit more of a straight pattern, which is better. Awesome. All right, so let's go back to our fire material and let's start cutting away this fire over time. So after this subtract node, um, I'm going to add another subtract node. I'll set that to zero. And just for the purposes of previewing this temporarily, I'm just going to make a scalar parameter and just plug that in here and then I'll hit apply. So over time, if we erode like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, you can see what's happening. Cool. So at runtime, um, an easy way to do this on our particles rather than using a scalar parameter, which is usually used by, you know, blueprints or the sequencer, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a dynamic parameter node. And this is basically a node that Niagara can access in order to inject values into the materials of the sprites that it is spawning. So um, we're going to basically set up multiple parameters in here and then name these and then use them in Niagara. So over here in the details, what I'm going to do is I'm going to name this first parameter erode. And then I'm going to set the default value to zero. 
And then I'm going to plug that erode into the subtract and I'm going to apply this, save. And then we can come back over to our fire system and we can add a node in here that will allow us to access that value. So under the particle update, I'm just going to go dynamic material parameters. And when we make that, we can see that we have access to this erode here. And in order to animate that over the time of the particle's lifetime, I'm just going to hit this arrow and I'm going to type curve and we're going to go float from curve. And by default, it creates two keyframes. At the start time, the value is one. And at the end time, the value is zero. You can see what that's doing in the viewport. So we actually want to reverse that. Uh, at zero, we want it to be zero. And then at one, we want it to be one. And then our fire will basically do that over time. Now I kind of want to change the interpolation of these keyframes a bit because we want our fire to sort of um, stay alive for a while before it gets eaten away. I'm just going to click here and go auto spline. Do the same up here, auto spline. And then I'm just going to drag this keyframe down a little bit so that our fire will stay solid for longer and then it'll just get eaten away at the end. Yeah, something like that. So that's pretty cool. Might actually just shrink this sphere down a little bit too. Nice. Awesome. Alrighty. Um, so like we talked about as well, um, there are a few other things that we want to kind of um, handle with this too. So we talked about wanting to sort of like fade the fire off a little bit. And you can also see at the start that it's really obvious when these, um, when these particles are spawning, they just kind of flash in, which looks a little bit gross. So this is another place where we can sort of add some custom parameters in here to attach to our uh, material. So I just want like a basic opacity control here. So in our dynamic parameter, I'm going to call this one opacity. And what it, I'm going to do is make a multiply node, multiply by this opacity. And we'll just make sure that the uh, starting default value for our opacity is zero. Plug that in. And now obviously we don't see anything because we've got zero plugged into it. So if you want to preview, if you still want to be able to preview everything in the material editor, you can just set this to one. Um, but what I'm going to do in the fire system is come back to my dynamic material parameters. And for the opacity, I'm going to do the same thing again. So I'm going to make a curve from curve and at zero time we want this to be zero and then at something like you know 0.2 time we want it to be one and again I'm going to set these to be auto splined so that I can kind of animate these in a slightly nicer fashion yeah nice so now you're kind of getting this sort of like um slightly nicer fade in. And in fact, we could probably change this from 0.2 to something a little bit later, uh, maybe 0.3. We're getting a little bit of weirdness down here. That's because our values are dropping below zero here. So if we just change this curve, yeah, nice. So that's nicer. That's kind of blending in a little bit more friendly. And I kind of would like this to be um, a little bit more glowy in the viewport. So I'm going to come back to my fire material here and I might multiply this up higher, maybe something like a hundred. Yeah, nice. And then I also might make this just a little bit more red so that we get a slightly nicer view in the viewport. Yeah, nice. That's awesome. That's like much more glowy, which is great. Fantastic. And what you could also do um, is you could also uh, use a slightly more red color towards the end of the particle's lifetime. Now you can do this with the color node inside of Niagara, um, but you know, since we've got this dynamic parameter thing set up, we might as well go ahead and use it. So let's just grab um, this color node and just duplicate it. So we're starting with this orange and then towards the end of the particle's lifetime, let's go like more red, something like that. And then let's make a lerp node 
to linear interpolate between this color and this color. And the alpha that we're going to use is we'll just grab another parameter from this dynamic parameter and drop this in here. And then we'll call this color blend. And if this is set to zero, the fire is yellow. If it's set to one, it's more red, which is pretty cool. So let's go and plug that into our system. So dynamic material parameter, just collapse these guys. And for the color blend, again, we'll go float from curve. And we want it to be zero at the start and one at the end. And in order to make that a little bit more obvious, what I might do is come up here to this orange and make this quite a bit more yellow at the start. Yeah, nice. So we're starting out fairly yellow at the bottom and then we transition into a more red at the top. And I'll make this even more red. Awesome. Very cool. Now, um, if we come to our opacity, we were sort of animating this 0.3. I think I want some more keyframes up here. So I'm going to add, um, I'm going to add a key and then I'm going to add another key. So this key is going to be at time one, the value is going to be zero. Whoops. And I also want to, I think what I might want to do here is um, break these tangents so that I can just make this kind of linear. And this is just going to help us fade things off at the end. Yeah, so we're ramping up the opacity to one, keeping it one, and then at the very end, we're fading those particles off so that we get this nice little fade off here at the end and you can kind of read some of the color in the emissive. Awesome. Very cool. Alrighty, so we'll save that. Um, I think that's probably enough for our fire material. And you can already see just like how much you're getting just from a single texture. Like this is literally just one 2K texture and you're getting all of this like life and um, vibrance from this system. So for the next one, um, we've got this MM fire mat. I'm going to create another material for my smoke. Smoke mat. I'm going to open that up. Um, and then for this one, again, we want the blend mode to be translucent because the smoke is going to be transparent. And we want this one to actually be default lit because we want our smoke to be able to be illuminated by things in the world. So what I'll do is just come to my textures and grab this guy again, drag this in here. Okay. And this time around, we're going to use the green for the opacity. And we'll grab a cube so that we can see that. Alrighty. And then we're just going to make a simple color, just a three float for our base color. And we're going to make this like a, like a white, kind of gray, something like that. Cool. And then if we come back into our fire system, we're just going to make another emitter for our smoke particles. So I'm going to go add emitter. I'll use a fountain again. I'm going to hit F2, call this smoke. And then again, um, there's a few things that we're going to do here. So I'm going to remove the drag and I am actually going to keep the gravity, um, but rather than making it negative 980, I'm going to make it like positive 250. And the reason I'm doing this is because I actually want these particles to accelerate. You know, like usually what happens with fire is like the smoke will come out slowly, but because it's so hot, it'll accelerate upwards into the air over time. And I'm going to come to my spawn rate just to reduce the number of particles. 
and we probably want to come to the uh, add velocity and make this a little bit lower. So maybe we go from 200 to 220. Maybe even a little bit slower, maybe like 150 to 180. And what I'm also going to do is change the size. So for the sprite size, I might go 80. Whoops, not 800. That's made way too much smoke. Yeah, something like that. Maybe like 60 to 80. Nice. And that's probably still a little bit too fast. So maybe if I come back to my velocity, I'll go like 100 to 125. And then I'll come to my gravity and change this from 250 to something like 100. Awesome. Cool. All right. So if I grab my MM smoke mat and plug that into my sprite renderer, and then just like before, uh, we need to set up these sub UVs under the sprite renderer, set that to two, and then make ourselves a, actually what I can do is we've already set this up so I can just copy this module from over here uh, and then just paste it in here. And then we just need to set the sprite renderer. Awesome, so that's gonna give us our smoke. So if we come back to the viewport, we can sort of see what we've got here. So there's a few things here that we actually want to do, I think, um, to make this look a little bit nicer. So we want these uh, smoke particles to rotate. We want them to scale up as they get bigger. So let's come back here to the fire system. And under the particle update, I'm going to go scale sprite size. By default, this gives us a float curve over the lifetime of the particle. So at the start of the particle's lifetime, I want it to be one. And then at the end of the particle's lifetime, I probably want it to be something like three. Maybe something a little bit more reasonable, maybe like 2.35. Something like that, sure. Um, cool, so under the particle update, I'm just gonna type rotation. And we're gonna go sprite rotation rate. And this will rotate all of the sprites for us as they fly up in the air. So what I might do here is uh, change the rotation rate to a random range float. And I'll just go from negative 100 to 100. And now our smoke is kind of going to sort of like billow up into the air. And rotate as it does that. Awesome. All right. So let's start um, refining our smoke material a little bit so that we can make this look a little bit nicer. So back here in our smoke material, um, there's a few things I think we want to do. So first of all, I think we do want to subtract like a tiny bit from this opacity image, um, just so that they don't look so sort of big and blobby. So similar to what we did with our file, let's drag off here and set up our base level opacity so it's a bit nicer. So let's go. Point one. We probably want to be pretty subtle here. That's pretty good. Let's have a look at that in the viewport. Yep, that's better. Alrighty. And then just like before, um, we, we don't want to subtract over time with this as much. Um, because with smoke, smoke doesn't really erode away like fire does like this. It kind of just like billows and warps and then it dissipates. So let's set that up a little bit. Um, so back in our smoke mat, we'll grab another one of those dynamic parameters and we will make another one of these erode nodes, but this time we won't erode as much. So here I'll go subtract. I'll subtract our erosion. I'll set the default value to zero. I'll plug that in. Apply that. I just quickly go and save everything. And then let's come back into our fire system and add those dynamic parameters. So dynamic parameter, erode, float from curve. And then we're gonna erode nothing at frame zero. 
uh, sorry, at time zero and then at time one, we might do something like 0.2. Yeah, so we want to be, or oh, maybe even like 0.1. We want to be like very subtle. And then the rest of the opacity is going to come from just a multiplier. So let's go back to our smoke material and set that up. So the second one is going to be opacity. So again, we'll multiply. Multiply by that opacity. Plug that in. I'm going to straighten these by hitting Q. And then we can adjust the opacity over time. So if we come back to our fire system and grab that parameter here, opacity, we'll do the same thing. Float from curve. And I actually want the smoke to not, I want it to kind of fade in a little bit slower at the start because we don't want those particles to be fully opaque, like opaque down at the bottom of the fire. So at zero, we'll set it to zero and then we'll make another key. So this will be at 0.3 time. We'll make that one. And then that smoke kind of like billows into existence, which is nicer. And then what we'll do is we'll make another keyframe, maybe at 0.75 time. We'll make that one. Yeah. And then that fire just kind of like, ah, uh, sorry, the smoke just sort of fades off, which is nice. Awesome. Okay. And what I might actually do here is make these particles last a little bit longer. Now that we've got all of our parameters set up. Um, so the lifetime is currently 1.4 to 1.75. So I'm going to make it 2 to 3. And I'm going to reduce the gravity force again. Just so that stuff doesn't fly off too high into the air. And then for the scale sprite size, what I'll do is I'll go up to three scale at the end of the particle's lifetime. And that might be a little bit nicer. Cool. Um, and because we made this default lit, you know, if we, um, if we just, just to show you what happens, if we grab like a point light, Maybe this can be like a firelight. So I'll just turn off like cast shadows and just make this kind of like a, yeah, like a hot orange or something. Maybe we'll set the value to like, yeah, we'll set it to one. You can kind of see um, what happens with the smoke, you know, like it's like it'll be illuminated, which is really nice. Down the bottom, we get this kind of illumination on our smoke and then it flies up into the air and it kind of um, goes gray again because it's losing the illumination. Nice. All right. So the next thing I think we want to do is we want to start adding some distortion into our smoke because right now these are obviously just like flat cards that are just sort of um, disappearing. So let's fix that a little bit. So back in our smoke, we're going to do a similar thing before. I'm going to grab this texture. And in fact, I might even just come over here and just copy this setup that we made before, just because that's easier. Typically what you would do is like you would make this a material function. That's what I'm doing in uh, Galaxy Grudge because I use this technique all the time. So if we plug that in here, and then if we come here, you can kind of see what we're getting. Now this is sort of, um, this is not exactly perfect. What we actually want to do is we want to change the scale of this a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make myself a texture coordinate node in here, and I'm going to plug this into the panner. And then if we make this like, you know, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, then we get like the size of that distortion is sort of, uh, is much bigger, but because it's bigger, um, we need to scale down the speed of the panner. Something like that. I'm even going to go really low. So something like 0.025. Yeah. See, like you're getting this really nice kind of like smoky distortion on the smoke here, which is great. So let's hit apply there and just see this in the viewport. Yeah. Beautiful. Like you're getting this really nice kind of um, animated smoky distortion on those cards, which is great. 
We can maybe even go a bit faster. I might go 0.05. And I think, um, I think we probably do want these to be uh, a little bit bigger. So I'm going to come back into this uh, scale sprite size. And let's scale these up to like four. Nice. That's just like important to make sure this looks good from all of our angles. I think it does. Pretty good. Let's maybe slow it down a little bit. Come to that gravity. I guess something like 50. Awesome. Nice. Um, you know, so that's doing pretty much what we want, I think. Um, I do think that the overall um, opacity of the smoke is a little bit much. So what I might do is just come back here to my uh, smoke material and after all of these calculations get done, I'm just going to take this last opacity value and just multiply it down a tiny bit, maybe something like 0.9, just so that smoke is a little bit more translucent. Uh, maybe a bit more, let's try something like 0.75. Yeah, sure. You're just getting all this really beautiful motion that you can see through the distortion. Um, and it's really hard to believe sometimes that this is just like literally a single texture. So the memory footprint of the assets that we're making here are just like minimal. Um, there is actually one extra little thing that I want to mention that we haven't done yet that we probably want to. If I just freeze the viewport um, and come down here, you can sort of see, um, if you look at the way this fire intersects with the ball here, we're getting this really ugly sort of hard line, which is not super realistic. So let's fix that. Uh, let's come back into our fire material. And at the end of our opacity chain, I'm just going to add a depth fade. Plug that in. And... Um, Basically what a depth fade does is it looks at the distance between the pixel that's being rendered on the material and the closest opaque object behind the material. And then it basically um, interpolates the opacity value from zero to one based on that distance. So if I set this fade distance to something like 30 and apply that back here in the viewport, now you can see that the opacity is kind of like fading off, um, which is a little bit nicer. If we set this to something like 50, now you get like this, this really much nicer fade and you won't get those like gross hard lines on the sprites, which is, which is great. And that'll work, you know, whether you're sort of like close to it or whether you're kind of like far away, it doesn't really matter. That looks a lot nicer. Awesome. Okay. Um, so this is getting like fairly close to being done, um, but I think like we can do a little bit more with it. So the last little thing that I'd probably like to do to a fire like this is start adding like some little sparks that are coming out of the fire and going up into the air. So uh, we actually don't need a material for this. We can just use the base level um, material that the Niagara systems use by default. So let's do that. So we'll come back to the system and make another emitter and We'll call this, we'll just grab a fountain as well. And then I'm just going to hit F2. And we'll call this sparks. So let's change some parameters in here. Uh, let's get rid of our drag. Let's get rid of our gravity. And let's come to our, uh, our velocity here. 
Actually, that looks okay for the time being. What we probably want to do is under the initialized particle, we'll come to our lifetime. We'll just make this like 0.5 to 0.7. And let's grab the velocity and just change this from like uh, 300 to 400. Maybe 400 to 500. Yeah, okay. And then maybe let's sum. What we'll do is for the cone, we'll make the cone angle a little bit wider. So the sparks will sort of like fly out. And then under the particle update, I'm also going to add some noise. So I'll just grab like a curl noise force and I'll set the noise strength to something like a 70. And that's going to make our sparks kind of fly all over the place like crazy. Alrighty. Um, now, I like the sparks to be sort of like long and streaky rather than just round dots. Um, so what we can do is under the sprite renderer, we can come to the alignment and we can set this to velocity aligned. And this will basically align the rotation of the particles based on the direction that they're heading in. And then what we can do is under the particle update, if we go scale sprite size by speed, um, then we can use the, uh, the alignment to scale them. So before we put those numbers in, I'm just going to come back to the initialize particle to set the size. And we'll set this to be like one to two, because we want these sparks to be fairly small, obviously. Cool. And then under the scale sprite size by speed, for the min, I might go from uh, 0.1 and two. And then for the max, I'll go 0.1 and 3. Okay. And I'll make these a little bit bigger. So we'll go from 2 to 4. And maybe that's a little bit big. Maybe 3 is a bit big. Maybe we'll go 2.5. And we'll set this to like 0.15. Awesome. Alrighty. Um, so for the particle spawn, let's just add a color. And we'll set this up to be sort of like a bright orange. Something like that. Hit OK. Let's come back to our viewport and see how that's looking. All right. So... Now we can see them, but we can't really see them as much as I'd like to. So let's come back into our uh, system and under the scale sprout size by speed. Uh, what I might do is just set this back to something like 2.2 and something like that might be a little bit better. Yeah, and now I can just bring the overall size back down. Yeah, that's better. And let's just add a few more of these guys. Let's change the spawn rate. Make this something like 150. Nice. And then what I can also do with those sparks is... Um, I can just crank this color even higher. So maybe I'll go like 150 on the brightness. So they'll be even more visible. Yeah. Nice. And then what we can also do, um, we got rid of that drag system, but now that I think about it, we should probably bring it back because as those sparks go up into the air, we probably do want them to slow down a little bit. I think. Yeah, I think that's going to work a little bit nicer. And then maybe we'll just increase that. We'll increase that drag from like 1 to something like 1.5. And I think... Um, I'm just going to reduce that overall smoke um, opacity a little bit more. 
just so it's not as vibrant. And then because we're adding more drag to those sparks, what I might do is just uh, increase the velocity a little bit more. Let's try 150 to 200. Oh, whoops, that was the wrong, that was the wrong emitter. But back here on the velocity of this guy. Uh, 550 to 700. Yeah, much better. And let's just, maybe we make the cone for those sparks a little bit wider as well. Let's try something like 55. Now some of those guys will be sort of like going outside the fire. Beautiful. So, you know, obviously you can play with this stuff to your heart's content. Um, it's a lot of fun using Niagara like this and building these effect systems. Um, and, you know, super awesome that once you build this, you know, this is just an asset that you can use anywhere, you know, you can, uh, you can attach it to a character if a character is sort of, you know, carrying something that's on fire, um, you know, or if you had sort of like a castle environment and you needed sort of like torches or pyres everywhere, you can just make a bunch of these and then, um, chuck them in your level and Niagara will basically randomize all those particles, um, and, uh, it's it's a it's a really really cool system. I love uh, making stuff like this, and you can really see the power here of um, you know just using a single texture to create this entire system. Um, performance is amazing. Memory footprint is tiny. You know even the weakest graphics card can run this kind of stuff with hardly any overhead. Um, so yeah, we always encourage this sort of stuff in developing our project, just so that um, the game can run on as much hardware as possible. So yeah, hopefully that was uh, interesting for you guys. Um, hopefully you got something out of it. Uh, if you want to stick around, uh, like and subscribe to the channel, that's amazing. And like I said at the beginning of the video, if you want to subscribe um, to our Discord to follow along with our game's progress, you're more than welcome to do that too. Thanks a lot.